Hey buddy, it's Carm here, and <laughs> a feisty director, uh, back on a Sunday night. <laughs> Wanted to come on and um, do a response video to a very dear friend of mine, many years, I'm sure many of you know by now, uh, Shannon. i uh, done a video yesterday uh, talking about her, um, showing some of her musical heroes, um, favorite individuals in music she was um, showing and speaking about. Um, it encouraged us to um, do a response if we, uh, if we felt compelled and uh, couldn't help not uh, responding to this. Um, and she was saying, you know, it doesn't just have to be musicians per se, it could just be someone in music who's done something, you know, just somehow involved in the music making world, our producers and you know, what have you. And um, the challenge for me was trying to uh, narrow it down so I, wanted, I thought, well, maybe 10 or 12 or 15, but um, I just lost count when they just kept heading up. So um, try to go as quick, quickly and succinctly with these as possible. And uh, yeah, so uh, I'll just start right in. Just, uh, yeah, all people that have inspired me one way or another. Uh, starting in with Harold Budd, pictured here. Keyboardist, composer, uh, someone who really developed his own sense of time and pacing in playing and composing. Uh, I think uh, really causing anyone who's really listening closely to kind of slow down themselves and really contemplate what's going on with, within themselves as well as what, what he's doing. And he's done it that way for uh, many decades now. Harold Budd. Uh, Ray Lynch. Heard him very early on. That was a uh, right around the end of eighth grade. Another keyboardist, guitarist, multi-instrumentalist, uh, merging of classical and modern uh, composition and uh, playing techniques. Uh, music is very deep and dramatic as well as uh, whimsical and playful and uh, oftentimes uh, you know, it's a perfect merging of the two. Uh, some of his music has touched me very deeply since early on and uh, very much an inner seeker uh, his whole life. And uh, you could hear it out in, that in the music as well. So, Ray Lynch. Uh, Pat Metheny, guitarist and composer. Uh, really one of the first people that really um, uh, introduced me to jazz, and opened me up to that area, improvised music in general, uh, made it accessible, uh, has an accessible style, as well as being quite challenging. And he appears like the kind of person that I think anyone would like to meet. Uh, very seems very approachable. Uh, I always think of him as almost like through his albums. It really feels like hearing from an old friend, which I've said for many years about uh, my favorites. Those albums, each time another one comes out, you know, it's, whatever gap there is in between, it's like hearing from an old friend. It doesn't matter how much time has passed. You just um, you take up where you left off. It always feels like that with his uh, with his music. So, yeah, Pat Metheny. Terry Riley, someone who I heard right around the end of high school, uh, innovative as far as modern composition and improvisation, uh, taking uh, what could be called the avant-garde in a completely different direction in a lot of ways, in the ways he thought about music and structured it. Uh, another person who uh, has his own sense of time and pacing and uh, tuning even, just uh, a real innovator and someone else is very much uh, an inner explorer that you could hear through his music. Uh, deeply spiritual and uh, exploratory in uh, just about every possible way. Uh, Robert Rich, uh, electronic innovator, well, electroacoustic innovator, started off at a very early age, I think 13 years old, building synthesizers and, and playing them. You could really hear in the music, uh, think that of an old soul very developed early on and uh, another person who's worked with tuning and uh, just exploring so many possibilities in, in music and how it correlates with other aspects of uh, life in the sciences and philosophy just finding the connection between all of them so, very powerful Robert Rich a collaborator and friend of Robert Rich uh, Steve Roach another uh, person innovative on synthesizer uh, found his style pretty early on, you know, being influenced by uh, German electronic musicians. 
but someone who's always sought to go deeper. Um, and also, uh, kind of like Cowdy Oldman, who I'd shown recently, uh, merging the ancient and the futuristic, uh, really making a hybrid of them in such a way that um, it's just very distinctive. And someone else who just uh, always goes deeper with every uh, every mode, mode and means of expression. So, Steve Roach. Uh, Deuter, uh, multi-instrumentalist. Uh, someone who's traveled the world, explored so many different cultures and, and different instruments, uh, seamlessly blending them into his own music. Uh, I think of uh, Derek, who used the term uh, healthy music. To me, his music is very healthy and you can't help but uh, feel better in some way upon hearing it. Even if it isn't one's taste, just hearing it off in the distance a little bit, just I find always just makes you feel uh, a little better. So, and Deuter. Constance Demby, another innovator of uh, electronic and uh, acoustic mu music, uh, a hybrid of those. Uh, something about the way in which she, her chords, her phrasing, her tones, uh, just have so much emotion and so much power in them and just, um, just envelops you in a certain way. Ever since hearing her way back when, I was just, uh, I just found it deeply touching without uh, going too far, in a sense, or being too saccharine. It's just the right blend of that, and um, it still has that even now. Uh, yeah, keyboardist and uh, multi-instrumentalist, Constance Denby. Edgar Froza, a founding member of Tangerine Dream, a synthesist, guitarist. Uh, just on his own with his solo work and how he's explored music and uh, uh, has a very distinct sense of uh, melody I find over the years. Uh, yeah, just one of the fine in innovators. I think even on his own, you know, aside from a Tangerine Dream, but even with being part of that, it's uh, I think it's changed uh, history in the way I think a lot of us look at um, you know, electronic groups and uh, maybe even redefining it in some ways. So. Yeah, Edgar Froza. Keith Jarrett. I kind of like uh, with Pat Metheny, introducing me to uh, further into jazz and improvised music. Uh, all the possibilities that can be done with a single instrument, in his case the piano, even though he is a multi-instrumentalist. And on this one he actually plays a, a whole myriad of instruments. But he's someone who's uh, just about as uncompromising and fiercely individual individuals they come, um, someone who really did it his own way, even in the era of other keyboardists, you know, going into electronics and, and different things, uh, you know, he shunned, shunned all the trends and all the, you know, he just he entirely went his own way and uh, really didn't care what anyone thought and uh, just admirably so. Whether you like his attitude or about things or not, you, know, you can't say he wasn't, uh, hasn't been true to himself. So, yeah, Keith Jarrett. Anthony Braxton, uh, another one, uh, innovative in uh, composition and improvisation, uh, further into that kind of music, uh, jazz and improv, uh, difficult at times uh, to, to get into, uh, multi-reed, plays tons of reed instruments, uh, very distinctive sound on each of them, exploring every, every possible sonic avenue in his own style of composing and to give a notation, and but um, yeah, no, nobody quite like him. Anthony Braxton. Kataro, an artist who's very personal to me, going back uh, many years. Also a link between a, a very dear departed friend. We shared a mutual love of his music. I kind of like Constance Demby. Something about his tones, his phrasing is just, uh, he rings the most out of his instrument and uh, really shows that electronic music be very warm and enveloping as much as acoustic music can and um, yeah it just uh, can wash over you so yeah Kataro. Uh, Klaus Schulze one of the original innovators modern electronic music another person who got the most out of uh, however small or large means that he had uh, restlessly exploring his instrument uh, every possible avenue and um, 
yeah, very distinctive. A lot of it really started uh, with him way back when. So, Klaus Schulze. Ralph Towner, guitarist, keyboardist, composer, uh, founding member of Oregon. Uh, some of his music has just touched me deeply over the years and also um, uh, a perfect, to me a perfect blend between the technical and the emotional and showing that they don't have to be poles apart but he really finds uh, something commensurate with them and um, yeah he's just always done that. Ralph Towner, someone a mutual favorite of uh, Shannon and I, uh, Peter Gabriel, uh, among my favorite singers as well, uh, about as distinctive a voice as you'll, you'll ever hear I'd say. And of course, being in Genesis, uh, Genesis Live, that album was so galvanizing for me, you know, 30 years ago now. And of course, you know, a large part of it was uh, you know, his voice at the center. And uh, yeah, what you say? You know, one of the greats, Very, as distinctive as they come. And Peter Gabriel. Uh, Manfred Eicher, uh, founder of uh, ECM, my all time favorite record label. Uh, someone who had just such a vision for how sound could be captured, how musicians could come together, and how people could uh, find the space around them and kind of respect the space around them within the playing and uh, interacting. Some pictured right here. Uh, still around now, still producing, and still uh, still uh, a restless explorer, just as a producer alone, as well as being a mus musician before. Yeah, Manfred Eicher from ECM. Don Cherry, another one kind of like uh, artist, kind of like Deuter, a world traveler, uh, multi-instrumentalist, uh, really sought to bring together as many cultures as possible, I felt. Not only te te teaching us about other cultures and uh, people coming together, but encouraging other artists to explore their own antecedents and uh, bring the best out of that and finding uh, that uh, the common ground between uh, all these different styles and approaches and uh, the common humanity of, uh, of artists and uh, you know, humans overall. Um, yeah, Don Cherry. Frank Zappa, uh, another one, uh, fiercely uncompromising, uh, very much did it his own way, whether he was doing a hybrid uh, kind of influence of uh, you know, 50s doo-wop or Ferez or uh, certain kinds of jazz or uh, all kinds of mixtures. Uh, very much did it his own way. Um, even I'll admit, you know, I only find a little bit of his music you know, or less than it used to be that I could really get into nowadays. But still, uh, it's hard not to admire him for um, just, uh, you know, living his truth as much as possible, it seemed, you know, through his art and uh, just overall. So, Frank Zappa. Uh, Pauline Oliveros, a wonderful uh, accordionist, uh, composer, improviser, uh, deep listener, uh, taught deep, deep listening, and really practiced it, whoever she was playing with. The album called The Wanderer. It's reminding me that uh, I really like the approach that Shannon was taking in her own video, kind of giving everyone kind of a, kind of a descriptive heading for each uh, artist. Maybe in a sense she could be considered a wanderer in a sense. Uh, certainly an explorer of, uh, of music and um, the way people interact and uh, well, listen to each other. So, yeah, Pauline Oliveros. Uh, Arvo Pert, Estonian composer. I heard him around 94, late 94. Uh, choral music, uh, instrumental, uh, slow, con contemplative. Another one kind of like Harold Budd, teaching us to maybe slow down a little bit and you know, listen to the listen to the spaces as well as the notes themselves, and um, you know find that space within ourselves to uh, to really appreciate it uh, you know as we as we go through it. And someone who's uh, been profoundly into uh, ever since then, Arvo Pert, John Sermon, a multi reed player. Uh, some keyboards as well as a, a flute. Uh, someone who actually uh, I was influenced by to uh, inspired to take up a wind instrument at some point uh, 
a little bit later in life, but um, a lot of it came through his influence. Uh, just, just to try it out and just to play for the, the, the fun and sake of playing. And uh, yeah, it makes very beautiful music as well as uh, challenging as an improviser. So, John Sermon. I think uh, I think that's about it. Oh, there's a few more here. Stevie Wonder. Uh, going back to the beginning for me, I was about eight years old. I heard his music, heard it around the house, heard it on a live cable special, and uh, just found it so moving. Uh, both music that made me happy, but also brought me to tears, even then at eight years old. By the way, if you know this album and uh, you know my tastes, probably no surprise that this would be my favorite, <laughs> uh, Secret Life of Plants. But uh, yeah, ever since uh, hearing him way back when, uh, it always stuck with me. Even though I hadn't followed him as much over the years, uh, he was really kind of um, really the first for me in uh, so many ways. And uh, he'd be a very deeply special and uh, personal artist to me. So, Stevie Wonder. Uh, I don't have a picture of him. Uh, Frank Forrest, uh, nowadays just known as Forrest, from uh, Musical Star Streams, radio program I've mentioned, uh, can't count how many times. Um, I could really honestly say that if it weren't for hearing this show from him way back when, I think it was the tail end of 89, I don't think I'd be sitting here doing these videos. Um, if that had, had that, that much of an impact on me, uh, exploring my, expanding my horizons musically and aesthetically. Uh, all the music he featured on there, just, uh, I'm still exploring it to this day when I listen to these old tapes. I'm hearing stuff I hadn't heard before. And he just had this vision of this, uh, putting together this show uh, early on in, uh, I think it was 1981. I think he's still around doing the show now. I think it's online. But, um, yeah, life was never the same since. And, uh, I feel much better for it. So, yeah, uh, Frank Forrest, or just Forrest, of uh, Musical Star Streams. And I think that's a little bit about it, but, um, oh. <laughs> you think I was going to forget this, did you? Vangelis, or Vangelis. Uh, now, the reason I'm actually showing these three at the end, um, I w wasn't doing like a, a ranking or anything. I, I don't think in hi hierarchical terms. But I wanted to save these three for the for the end, since they were the first three really that I got into in that order: uh, Stevie Wonder, Frank Forrest with Musical Star Streams, and Vangelis. Summer of 1990 from uh, seeing Blade Runner. Yeah, another uh, as an individual artist, uh, just affected me deeply and really kind of plunged me further into exploring music and of a different kind that I had heard previously. And uh, yeah, it just took me on around this winding path that um, I've con continued to go go through. And um, yeah, again, I've never been the same since, but in all the best ways. And uh, yeah, still nobody quite like him, and still still pretty much my favorite. So yeah, Vangelis. So uh, yeah, just wanted to come on and uh, do a response to that. Um, again, I couldn't help not responding. And um, yeah, if um, if you don't know Shannon's channel, well, please pay her a visit. I think you'll find it very worthwhile. And um, yeah, if you're compelled to respond to this yourself, uh, you should be happy and to see that. And uh, yeah, you may you may be surprised at what you find that uh, in your own collection. So yeah. well, thank you all for watching, and thank you Shannon for uh, for this uh, for this topic and, uh, and spreading it around, and for everything you do in your videos. So I you know, hope you're all well and. Uh, from the director and I, wherever he's at, and the producer is out somewhere. So the next one, peace, love, and joy. <laughs>